Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Siri Love Drive here, and today we're going to be talking about how you can make your community server better. Because guess what? I just launched my own community server. I've been looking, I've been doing some research, I've been figuring out how to make it the best community server possible. And even though not many people have joined yet, it is a pretty chill server. I've got to say, I do like it. If you're looking to join a new server, if you're looking to try something interesting out, the server's name is Serial Overdrives Quad Trio Duo Solo 2X Monthly. And then in parentheses, it says Short Nights Active Moderators. The first tip we're going to be going over is the server name, because if you look at the server name on the console edition Rust, you're going to see that it's red. So how did I do that? How did I make the text red? It's pretty simple, actually. So you've got to use two symbols. It's going to be the less than and the greater than symbol. And then in between those two, so they're sort of going to be pointed at each other, like you see on my screen, you're going to do color equals, and then the color that you're looking for your text to be. Red, blue, green, whatever, put it in there. And then when you want the text to stop being that color and go back to being normal, you again do those greater than and less than symbols, and then slash color. So just like you see on my screen, you do that, you're going to get red text. If you change it to blue, you get blue text, so on and so forth. In addition, you can use hex to represent colors, and you can get a more specific hue or color if you're looking to do something like that. But my recommendation, if you're not really familiar with this, just, just go with red, blue, green, whatever. And then after you get the hang of it, you can start getting a little fancy with it, making sort of more of a, a, a cool smorgasbord of colors. But for now, just stick with one. It's easy, simple, and it does make your server title look a little bit cooler. So moving on, let's actually go down and talk about world, or specifically map presets. So if you notice, there's a few different maps that you can choose from here. But if you go down a little bit further to map settings, you're going to see a seed number. So what you're going to find is if you go to Google and type in Rust Map Seeds, you've got some various services that you can browse. There's Rust Maps, there's Just Wipe, there's Rust.io. Personally, I, I actually used Just Wipe. It's Just Wipe net and then you do slash rust maps and if you go here there's a selection of maps of all varying sizes that look sort of interesting some of them are going to have a size that's just way too big for what you're looking for so you are going to want to set the size to medium and then you're going to want to look at the size and anything under 3000 works if you find a cool map you can look at the seed number and then you can just go ahead and use that map so yeah, it's actually pretty easy. You just select the seed number and boom, bing, bing, boom. You're going to get that exact map for your console Rust community server. A lot of people don't do that. They're just sort of rolling the dice, hoping they get a good map. But yeah, if you if you go to one of these websites, you can find a really awesome selection of maps. And there, there's a ton of really good ones out there. So you don't really need to be guessing. If you want a map with a lot of islands, you can go find it. Like right here, look at this map. It's got a ton of little islands here. But yeah, just, just searching through it, you can find some really interesting combos, some really cool combos, and I definitely recommend doing that because honestly, people spend so much time messing around with settings, but they don't think about the map. That's one of the most important things that you can set for a console Rust community server. Moving on, you got the monuments. That doesn't really matter. Now, well, let's get into the world because this is something I see a lot of people doing. They're, they're like I did it a little bit too. They're cranking up the amount of boats. They're cranking up the amount of time it takes for things to decay. They're cranking up the amount of boars, stags, horses, etc. When you do this, do keep in mind that the more of these things that you add into the world, the more likely your server is to lag. So if you really don't care about chickens, maybe knock it down to two, maybe knock it down to zero. You don't need chickens all over the place. You don't need boars all over the place. You don't need bears all over the place. If you knock down that number, it is going to make your server run smoother. So do keep that in mind. If you max everything out, you're going to have a really laggy server and people generally aren't going to like it. Now let's go over to the console here because this is one of the things that I see people messing up all the time. So they don't know how to get owner IDs. They don't know how to get admin IDs. They don't know how to get any of that in. So here's the deal. If you want an owner ID, you just type in owner ID and then you just type it in. You put two brackets, two parentheses, Inside that parentheses, you're going to put the name. The reason you want to use these parentheses is because if there's a space in your gamer tag, you need those. So just, just use them all the time, get into that habit, and bing, bing, boom, you're going to be fine. Now, if your command can't find that person, what that means is that person has not joined your server. To add someone as an owner, an admin, or anything like that, 
you actually need that person to go into your server first. Now, another thing to cover too is just how to get your server going and everything like that because this is one of the things I actually ran into a lot of trouble with and this is one of the bugs I want to go over. So what I've noticed is a lot of the time your server, if you restart it, if you set it to offline, online, if you do a wipe, it's not going to show up. So one of the things that I've been doing is just the second I get everything working, once I've got the server in the state that I want it to be in, I don't really play around with it much. I, I don't touch anything in these settings because a lot of these settings, if you change them, they do require a restart. They do require the server to go offline and then online again. And I've found that generally when it comes to that community server list picking up new community servers, it is very spotty. Sometimes you restart your server and it just completely disappears, and that's pretty much the fastest way you could go about killing a server. Once your server has disappeared, you're stuck trying to restart it and everything like that. So you're just restarting your server again and again, hoping it shows up. And if it doesn't happen, you might need to do a full wipe of the server. So my recommendation here, do not, under any circumstances, Start messing around with settings midway through the wipe. Let the server play itself out. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and play around with those settings a little bit. Set something up for the next next wipe, everything like that. But whatever you do, don't be restarting or doing any, any of that weirdness with your server because it, it's, it's going to get wild. It's going to get weird. It's not what you want. Over some custom boot commands. So there's a variety of commands that you can run for the console edition Rust to do various things like ban items, give players VIP and everything like that. This custom boot commands, this is where you want to put that. So when a server reboots, restarts, wipes, and restarts, which would be what's going to happen every Thursday, the last Thursday of every month, you can have those commands run. So if let's, let's say you, you want to ban, I don't know, a, a T2. You can put the code to ban the T2 right in here in the custom boot commands. And then when the server restarts, it's automatically going to be banned. So one of the things that I messed up with this wipe, this first wipe for my server, was I wanted to ban T2s and T3s. I was at work when the wipe happened. I thought, hey, it's lunch. I can just sneak off real quick, get a few commands in with my phone. No big deal. It, it turned out that there was actually an issue. D11 didn't do the wipe correctly, and it took them some time to get servers back up. By the time servers were back up, I was busy doing something else. And the server just ran, and T2s and T3s were enabled. I'm not sure if people built with them, but at this point, I'm not going to go ahead and disable that item because that's going to give anyone who sort of got the jump, got that early initiative down, it's going to give them a huge advantage having a T2 and T3 until Saturday. So, yeah, it's just a normal 2x server right now because I didn't have custom boot commands. And if I had that, that would have actually prevented all these issues. Anyways, that's, that's all I've got for today. Just a few little tips. If it did help, Please let me know down below in the comments. If you got more questions or if you got some tips of your own for community servers, make sure you drop them down below. Otherwise, until next time, peace. Also, if you, if you do join my server, Serial Overdrives, Quad Trio, Duo, Solo, 2X, Monthly, I, I'd really appreciate it. It's really cool to see people building, working with the server, and, and we've got a really good vibe going on. So if you'd like to add to it, I, I would love that. I would love that. Anyways, thank you again. Until next time, peace.